Good afternoon. I hope I'm not speaking too loudly here. I'll try to temper my voice. Welcome to everyone who has come together. Uh, on behalf of the family, we express appreciation and thanks for prayers, for thoughts, for expressions of influence that you have uh, offered to them. We are taping this, uh, this service so that if you know somebody who couldn't be here, our weather was not very cooperative, obviously, today, though it seems perhaps appropriate on a day such as this for it to be raining, to be a little bit on the gloomy side, but we pray the sun will shine once again, though the sun will certainly shine in this place. Uh, and so we pray that the promises of God offered to us by the Son of God will shine upon you today. Um, just a couple of quick announcements before we move into our time together. Uh, if you have a cell phone or some type of a device, if you could please turn that to silent, turn it off so that we don't have any distractions during the time of service together. Uh, and then following our time, if you are able to, please come downstairs here at uh, this lovely place of worship. Uh, there's a wonderful hall. There will be a time of fellowship and food to be shared together. Um, if in the mad rush you can't get to the, to the door, to the stairs, to go downstairs, linger for a moment. There are wonderful pictures uh, placed of Fran and, and some parts of her life and the people so special to her, uh, both at the back and here at the front. And you're welcome to come and just have a little visit, have a moment if you would like to have that. And you can do so as well during the lunch. Just slide back up here if you'd like to have a private moment of peace and, and quiet and, and just reflection. You're welcome to that. Again, thank you. You are welcome in this place. I would invite you to find the blue hymnal. We're going to do a little singing together, so I would invite you to prepare your heart, your voice. Turn with me, please, to number 509 in the Book of Common Praise. 509. Precious Lord, take my hand. Let's sing together. <laughs> Gave you the wrong one? 506. 506. Can we turn to that, please? <laughs> Gotta have at least one error so that Brandon can take a little bit of my expense. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. Please turn to number 506, Lord of All Hopefulness. 506. <laughs> of God, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of grace, God of glory, we come 
into your presence today to remember your child, friend. And we give you thanks today because you gave her to us to know and to love as a companion during our pilgrimage on earth. And so we ask that in your boundless compassion, Father, you would console us who mourn. Give us your strength and your aid so that we might see in death the gateway that leads to eternal life and that we might continue our course on earth in confidence until, by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to offer two readings from Scripture today. The first one is taken from right at the very end of the book of Revelation, the very end of the Bible. A promise, a vision of more than we know. Revelation chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne that said, Behold, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the very thirsty I give water as a gift from the spring that leads to the water of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the second reading, I turn to the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought him the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Lord, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And there was also there a prophetess named Anna, daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow, to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. She also saw the child and began to praise God and to tell everyone about this child, everyone who was looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Family, God's grace and peace to all of you. You are held and have been held in prayer. Not only this last week, but we have journeyed together with you in different ways through France, changes of life. And so uh, I just want you to know Trinity misses her too. Uh, and we keep you in heart and thought in the days and the weeks of I and Ed. And we will hold you in prayer. We will hold you before the Lord and the promises that come from God. And pray that they may touch you, maybe not immediately, but they will be present to you to go forward with you. And, uh, no, Fran, where do I begin? Uh, 
I've been a pastor at Trinity for 16 years, and Fran was a very integral part of that community of faith long before I came along. Uh, and throughout my time of ministry, I had many a time of visiting with Fran and, and not realizing how much time had quickly gone away, and I don't think I said four words. I just had to be present there, and Fran could carry it all by herself. And uh, what a joy to have had those times together, and, and I give thanks to God. I have given thanks many times for Fran. And we talked about a lot of different things. Well, she talked about a lot of things, and I'm not sure I can remember everything. I don't keep notes when I'm sitting with people, and maybe that's a good thing. But uh, I, I feel like at least sometimes we talked about literature and books and reading and, and a few different things. Uh, I would sometimes make a suggestion. I don't know if she ever took them up on books that she could perhaps read on, on some topic we were on or just for entertainment. Uh, and there's a book that was written about 350 years ago. And I know I suggested it. I, I'm not sure Fran ever read it, but it was a classic uh, of Christian devotion called The Pilgrim's Progress. I don't know if you know this one, I encourage you to go and read it. It's an old book, so the language is a little strange. But it's about a pilgrim who journeys through a world, this pilgrim's name is Christian, journeying through a world of, of mountain and valley and, and struggle and trial, but also companionship and others who help along the way. And it's got all these twists and turns until it comes to the very end. And in the final of this book, Christian arrives at his destination. He has come to the end, and it is an enormous hill with a glorious city set upon it. And as Christian arrives, the gates open wide, and out stream friends and family and angels and trumpets sound to welcome Christian home, and peace and rest is there, for that journey is over for the pilgrim. Fran was on her pilgrimage for 86 plus years. It started in a little podunk town way down south in Saskatchewan. I'm from southwest, so I think I could say that about Pontiac and Admiral and some of those little places down there, Cadillacs, wonderful communities. Don't come after me, please, afterwards. <laughs> Beautiful place. And she entered into this world and, uh, and engaged this world, and, and you have been touched by her life. You have been some of those companions upon her pilgrimage as she spent much time on the farm and much time in those communities but also ventured forth into the world to go to boarding school and experience. She used to share things about that and, and some of the rules and some of the strictures of it but also I think some life and friendships and worship that she experienced in that place and how that was a special place for her in her childhood or her youth. Uh, and took on, and I didn't even know some of these things, right? A bank teller. I didn't know she was ever a bank teller. That's, that's awesome. And, and many of the different things she took training for and, and the ways she engaged her pilgrimage. But I have no doubt that the very heart of her pilgrimage was family and was friends. That the support and the encouragement and, and the life and the laughter that she shared with you and many others who I hope were able to engage in some of this reflection uh, have known buoyed her all along the way for her pilgrimage. And you know what? Did the same to you. You have stories. You have memories. Far more than I got time. I, I can't talk like friends. So you're like you're in luck. We're not going to be here for three hours. Uh, but you can share with each other some of those special stories. And, and I think of friends' life a little bit like this. Way back in the olden times, before electricity, in cities and communities, they had lamp lighters. They wouldn't have lamps along the main streets, but they needed somebody who could go with a long pole and a wick and a flame and who could go along and light the lamps and make their way along that street and along that road. And as they went along, you could see suddenly behind them there was light, there was a way. You knew how to go forward. And I think a friend is one of those lamp lighters. One of those ones who has given to so many of you, so many generations, a legacy, a light, that you too can go and shine and help others to know what life can be about. Joy, community, simplicity, but also great depth in those times spent together. And there was one more companion who walked along the way with Fran from the very beginning to the very end and beyond. The Lord, the Alpha, the Omega, the Christ, 
the one who came into this world to redeem her and to all who have come to know and trust him. And there was a little bit of intentionality, and I hope you caught it in my gospel reading, because that's not, I think, a typical funeral gospel passage. But we hear that we are almost at Christmas, and I think it's hard to feel grief. Any time of the year, for sure, but Christmas is harder when everyone else is trumpeting joy and excitement and and on all the wonderful family gatherings and here we come together to remember but also to feel sadness at the loss of one who will not be a part of those Christmas celebrations. And in the Gospel, there are two seniors, Simeon and Anna. They have been faithful all their life. They have longed to see, and finally they do, that a child is given. How many children were given to Fran's life and what delight she took in them? Well, in this child that we proclaim at Christmas is salvation, is hope, is strength, is promise for the pilgrimage you are on with absolute certainty that at the conclusion of your pilgrimage, the gates will open wide for you as well. And one will proclaim, come, enter into peace. Come and know the rest and the joy to come back into that love you have known and that waits for you. May God's promise strengthen each and every one of us in our own pilgrimage. May God make it so. Amen. I'd like to give you an opportunity to rise to sing this song. So if you are able and so inclined, please rise for number 352. Let us join heart and voice in amazing grace. <laughs>
invite the community once again to be seated. We have heard word of promise from God's holy word of one who was offered to us not only as a child, but one who grew into manhood and took on the battle with sin and death and the grave and has overcome and gives the victory to us. And therefore, we are bold to come to our Heavenly Father in those promises, offering prayer. We pray that your hearts will be attuned and will also be receptive to the promises as we place ourselves in God's hands. Let us pray. Almighty God, you call all people to know and to trust that they are your children. We are the creation of your hand, and we pilgrimage in this world, not always knowing the direction we should go, not always following the path that is lit before us. So we pray for grace and strength, wisdom and guidance. We have seen so much of that in your servant, Fran, and we rejoice before you today once again for for giving her to us, even though we feel that loss and that sadness, for knowing she now won't pilgrimage with us in that physical way. We entrust her to you. We pray that you would send your Holy Spirit upon us, granting courage and faith to all those who mourn, so that they might even have strength for the days that lie ahead with a holy and certain hope the joyful expectation of eternal life with those whom they love. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot always understand or sometimes even face, to have trust in the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, and resurrection to a life that is everlasting. For you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death. By his resurrection, he has opened the kingdom of heaven to all who believe. Make us certain that because he lives, we also will live. And that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor anything in heaven or on earth can separate us from your love, which is ours through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. And now, as you may be moved or able, I invite you to join in the words the Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant friend. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep from your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints who dwell in light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I invite you, too, to know that you are blessed, that God goes with you. God is Alpha and Omega and will not depart from you. Your hearts can be strengthened as you walk in God's blessing. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. come to the conclusion of this time of worship, this time of remembering, this time of being lifted, we pray. God's grace be upon you. Once again, you are welcome to come downstairs to join in time of food and fellowship with one another. Uh, I would invite you to rise as you may be able, and let us conclude with a song, Shine, Jesus Shine, number 460. Please rise. 460.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.